All right, today we got another mower to go get, and this one looks like it has potential to be a pretty nice mower. This one may be a little bit difficult to get. Basically, it's in someone's backyard. It's a pretty tight yard with some fences and gates, but I think it's worth it. Let's go. All right, so what did we get? 17 horsepower, 42 inch cut. Kawasaki Yazuki ZT Max. I like the metal chute, as long as it's not too bent. Blades are, eh, they're worn. They're probably 50% worn. And from what I've read, I think the ZT Maxes are actually the same as some Xmark mowers. It's definitely not new, but it looks like a solid little mower. I wanted to go over in the shop and see what work it needs. Then we can order any parts, get the mower out of the shop, work on other stuff, and then the parts come in and bring it back in. Let's take a look at it. The tires are not very pretty, but they are all holding air. So that's good. This back one here though, the valve core is a little gummy. Yeah, it looks like we have a tube in here. Uh, so I may change out the valve core and we may need to try to clean up this wheel. It's awfully rusty. So the big question is why was this mower abandoned? I believe they said it was some sort of electrical issue. So let's take a look at the electrical system and I already noticed one thing about it. All of these relays under here are unplugged. We've also got a couple of fuses here that we can check. Let's approach everything this way. Let's check the oil, hydraulic fluid, then throw a battery on there and see if it'll crank. Okay, so the oil level looked pretty good and it didn't actually look that dirty. The transmission fluid, I tried to be real careful to clean as much loose dirt away from the cap as I could because I don't want to get dirt in there. The level looked pretty fine in there. There was no dipstick or anything, so I couldn't really, didn't really have anything to judge it off of. I just hooked up the battery. I believe I already checked the air filter on here, so that should be fine. So now I'm just gonna see what it does without even touching those relays. Probably nothing, does nothing. Let's put the parking brake on. Handles out. Sit in the seat. Nothing. Okay. My PTO clutch is not even clicking. So, let's plug those relays back in. I hear it clicking somewhere. Out of the seat. So that dead man switch should not be affected with the e-brake on. So that's a little funky right there. You should be able to start a machine while you're not sitting in the seat as long as the parking brake is set and everything is set. Now let's check our fuses just to see how they are. Now I am going to try to arc the solenoid and see if the engine will crank. But sometimes Things can be just so dead that the dead battery like sucks up a bunch of juice. I'm gonna try throwing in another good battery that I have and see if that helps us out. All right, put a new battery in there and we got some good voltage. So let's see what happens. That sounds like a bad starter solenoid. I can't help but feel like it's spinning slightly slow. This is a 275 cranking amp battery. Uh, it was a 250. Should be okay. I don't hear my PTO switch clicking on and off though. Now my blades are not spinning. Now comes the fun part where we try to get some bang bang in there and see if it goes pop pop or something like that. All right. Unfortunately, like I've noticed, I have to be sitting in the seat, which makes it a little harder to do this part. We'll load it up with carb cleaner and sit. We'll see what happens. Starter sounds slightly squeaky. 
let's put some fuel in and see if it'll um, fire up off of its own fuel and see how bad the carb is. It's pretty exciting. I wasn't expecting this one to work that easily. Okay, both tanks were dry, but then I realized that there's a lower cell in the front here. So back here, it looks dry. I have no idea if there is fuel in there or not. I'm hoping they were dry. The fuel filter looks pretty dry. So anyway, I'm hoping it's just fresh gas I've got going in there. Let's um, give it another width of carb cleaner and see if we can get some fresh fuel pull up in there. I put fuel in the right tank because the selection valve is set to the right side tank right now and I have no idea if it works or not. So my next sequences are going to be, first of all, I'll probably disconnect this line here at the fuel pump, make sure it's squirting fuel out, then we know fuel is getting to the carburetor. And second of all, if that is pumping out there at that point, then I need to start looking at the carburetor. Okay, let me explain to you what I just did and why I did it. So the first thing I did was I got tired of sitting on the seat. So I made a little jumper wire to jump that seat switch because disconnecting it is a kill situation, not a run situation. Then I could not get fuel to come out of my fuel pump. So I sprayed some PV blaster on there because sometimes moistening up a fuel pump will get it to start pumping. That was to no avail. So I decided to try my other gas tank. The other gas tank worked better. And somewhere in there, I decided to break out my brand new transfer pump to see if I could suck fuel through the system. I believe I could not do it on the right tank. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I tried it there. It did not work. The left tank works fine. So hopefully I can fix the right tank and not waste the fuel I put in there. I've got a bunch of fluid out of the system, some of which seemed a lot like water. So I basically kept pumping and pumping until it smelled and felt a little bit more like gasoline. We now should be in a situation where we can crank the engine and it will get fuel because I was cranking it and fuel was squirting out the back side of the fuel pump where it's supposed to. Let's crank it for a little bit and see what happens, see if she fires up. Nothing so far. Let's give it a little shot of carb cleaner and see if that kicks anything in. Well folks, it looks like we may be in for a carb cleaning, unfortunately, because fuel should be coming out of here just fine now. Oh yeah, lots of fuel, but doesn't seem to be making it to the carburetor, which is a bummer. I think what we did needed to be done and you start with the simple things first, but it looks like we're gonna have to investigate the carburetor. It could be something simple. No way to know yet. Okay, I got the carb off and it's a little bit dirty. You can see the bottom of the main jet tower, which would be in the bottom of the float bowl. It's dirty down there, but the rest of it doesn't look too bad. Looking inside there and whatnot. I don't know, I may not do that much actually. I got this solenoid where it seems to be working pretty good. So really I think the biggest issue is that this gasket is pretty much gone for the float bowl. So I can't really assemble or run this without that gasket. I mean, the rest of it's still in there and I could try to cram it back up in there and I may try to run it like that um, but ultimately I think I want another gasket. Let's give it a quick clean. Alright, carb is back together. Let's see if it works. I put that old gasket back in there. I lubed it up with some PB Blaster, I like to put that on old rubber parts just to help them stay moist and supple. 
and um, see if that helps at all. If the float's working right, there shouldn't really be gas, get, gas getting up to that point, um, in theory, but, you know, things bounce around a lot. But this mower does not have the exhaust right under the carburetor like um, a lot of riding mowers do, so it's not as big a deal if it does leak out there. I still want to replace that gasket, but to get this mower running and functional, I don't think it's necessary. So let's throw this back on there and see if we can um, get this thing to fire up and stay running. All right, put the carburetor all back together. It's on there. And yes, there is a crossover pipe on the exhaust under there, so it could leak. So I probably really don't want to run it much like this, just in case the football gasket will leak. But with that said, let's see if this thing will prime itself, get fuel into the carburetor, and start up and run. So it might take a little bit of cranking, because the carburetor is dry. That's a good sign. Oh yeah, it's starting to get a whiff of gas in there. Let's take it off choke. Feels like it's still a little dry. to it doesn't sound that bad might need new spark plugs let's let it idle and warm up there a little bit make sure there's no gas leaking we're good okay I've been letting it idle there for a little bit I think it's running just a tad lane um, but I've not really had any Kawasaki's like this that I've had running for a while so I don't really know exactly what they sound like but with that said let's try throttling it up and seeing if she runs and drives good I choked it out. Oh, uh, you know what? It might still be not getting enough fuel when I hit it to full throttle. It may burn up the fuel it's got and then die out. And now it's doing the same die thing again. Okay, so here's my consensus for now. It is that I need to get a float bowl gasket for this carburetor. And I don't really want to take the carburetor apart again until I've got that football gasket because I'll have to take it apart again when I get the football gasket. So we're gonna get some parts for this thing and be back on this when we get those parts. But at least we know it runs. So sometimes in Oklahoma, you find um, horses at convenience stores. You'll see them out my left as I drive by. Kind of funny. I think they enjoy the attention that they're getting. <laughs> 